So I'm the um, client services coordinator for the sound collection. So I facilitate access to the recordings in the sound collection by pretty much anyone really who wants to access that material. The large part of it is material that used to be part of the Radio New Zealand sound archives. So that is discs, tapes, cassettes, CDs, dating right back to the 1930s. Um, and that's material that has usually been broadcast by Radio New Zealand or one of its predecessors, whether it was the NZBC or going right back to the National Broadcasting Service. So there's that material. Um, there's also uh, some music, commercially released music discs, although that's not a key part um, of, of our collection, but we do have a lot of in New Zealand music recordings. Um, and then there's material from other broadcasters. Um, since the early 90s, we started archiving um, student radio, private radio and iwi stations as well. So we've got some of that material um, in the collection as well. Our collection database is online, so people can search for if they know a family member was interviewed or they're just doing some research generally. And they can um, request more information about the, the recording or they can... Um, ask to access it in, in a number of different ways. So that's members of the public and researchers. Often we get a lot of people doing research who want to just listen to recordings once, make some notes, and that's all. Um, we also have the glam sector, galleries, libraries, archives, museums. So museums um, in particular often use archival sound to enhance an exhibition. Um, and then we have the production community, so people making documentaries and films, whether that is for um, TV, feature films, or radio. We, um, radio New Zealand, of course, is still a huge client, using its own archival material for a really wide range of programmes, and also other broadcasters as well, other radio stations. Yes, yeah, so collection highlights. I mean, there's some real gems. I've been working here for a few years and I'm still constantly discovering things that I think, wow, it's amazing that we've got this. Um, we have a complete collection of the Tanza label, which was the first um, commercial music label in New Zealand. And we, Radio New Zealand had acquired quite a few of these over the years, so we had them in our collection that way, but then we also had the opportunity um, with Radio New Zealand, we, uh, as a joint project, we purchased an entire collection from a collector um, in Hawke's Bay a few years ago, and so that's a great collection of early uh, 1950s New Zealand popular music. Um, we have some great recordings from World War II. Uh, the Broadcasting Service had a mobile unit, a truck which went with the New Zealand forces overseas to North Africa. And this was before tape recording came in, so the only way they could record was on big 16-inch um, acetate discs. And so those are amazing recordings recorded all through North Africa and Italy of um, New Zealand soldiers and nurses and doctors. You know, so they're, they're real taonga. An artillery barrage of unprecedented weight and duration marked the opening of Eighth Army's terrific onslaught against the enemy at Alamein. Nothing to even compare with the power of shelling used in this full-scale attack has yet been seen in the battle for Egypt. I went out with one section of our troops in front of our forward defence lines, for this carefully planned blow was actually launched from no man's land. Exactly at 25 minutes to 10, the gaping fire of flashing guns behind us burst forth on the enemy positions, and the cheers of the troops on the start line were smothered in the roar and trembling which filled the air. It is Saturday, the 23rd of January, and here are the New Zealanders entering Tripoli, the capital of Libya, led by the Maori battalion. The Maoris are at the head of the column, in the last few days, they took over the spearhead of the advance, led personally by General Freiburg and commanded by Colonel Charles M. Bennett. And now they are a magnificent sight, a long column of trucks, all the men mounted on the roof, over the cabs, fully equipped, tin hats, tommy guns, bayonets and web gear. And they're all smiles and a very happy, victorious-looking army as they approach the entrance to the city.